You may have seen the video I put out last year questioning whether Planetside 2 was still relevant in 2018. Did its length of time in gaming circulation leave it overrun by new titles with whiz-bang features and RTX on? Or instead had Planetside 2 aged like a fine wine, its unique attributes only becoming stronger and more noticeable with time? On returning to PS2, I was pleasantly surprised. There were still people playing, there were noticeable updates, and that spark that makes Planetside 2 different was still there. The old issue of performance in larger fights was still the old issue, but after all you had to expect some give and take when battles of this size were taking place. We left on a hopeful note that there were indications that perhaps an update to the core of the Forge Light engine that powers Planetside 2 may be in the works. Of course, if you've been watching some of my more recent videos, you'll know that a DirectX 11 version of the game has been on the Planetside 2 test server and people have had some very favourable results. Well, just a couple weeks back, the devs rolled out a much anticipated update, adding combat wall-y robots, some new spawn mechanics, a new event type and so on, but the big ticket news was the rollout of DirectX 11. So what does it do for Planetside 2's place in 2019? Well, it removed the most complained about part of Planetside 2 probably since its release, and yes, I'm including Zoe Max's at launch. For most people with nostalgia of Planetside 2 on release, the feeling is now of how the game should have always been to play. It's buttery smooth. It makes Planetside 2 feel even more ahead of its time, always slightly too ambitious to comfortably wear the DirectX 9 suit, now it's wearing something more tailored and accommodating to its uh, proportions. For veterans again, this can truly mean you can see the game you loved in a brand new way. For some, it might mean finally hitting the refresh rate of your monitor, and for others, it might mean a solid 60fps at graphics settings you wouldn't have ever considered before, making it look wildly better than you ever remembered the game. In the right time, with the right lighting, Planet Side 2 is still a gorgeous game. The magic you fell in love with in 2012 still gets you in a way that other games just failed to reach, and perhaps the open world nature isn't the technical marvel that it seemed all that time ago, but Planetside 2 always had more strings to its bow than just that. Pleasingly, if we look at the concurrent user Steam stats, we can see that the bump that Planetside 2 got from this update, and I'm guessing some of that was from the inclusion of PS2 in that Steam recently updated and used pop-up that you get when starting, well those users seem to be sticking around. The average weekend numbers are up about 75% compared to before the update, and if we look at the average CCUs over a longer period, we're back to the sort of Steam player numbers that Planetside 2 saw about 2-3 to three years ago, and also keep in mind that some people will be playing just from the launcher too, not just through Steam. And if you permit me, I'd just like a slight aside to talk about one topic that I've seen a number of people mention since I did those test server videos. I've seen people complain about DirectX 9, the previous engine framework, and say that Planetside 2 should always have been developed on DirectX 11. You can look at the Wikipedia, see DirectX 11 launched in 2009, Planetside 2 launched in 2012, and say look, why did they use that old setup? I think that's a rather selective view of the situation, and the choices that developers have to make for a few reasons. Plantside 2 was free to play on release, so immediately as a developer you want to have the largest possible player base. That kind of goes without saying, but this is absolutely pivotal for a free to play game especially. So that means having your game playable on the widest possible number of machines. Do you go with something older, perhaps a more known system that your developers have experience with, but that also ticks the boxes for the maximum number of players? Or something newer that perhaps people don't yet have the hardware to use. Also if you look at Wikipedia again, you can see that DirectX 12 has been out officially since 2015, it's coming up to 4 years since its release, and yet DX12 is still often the more experimental graphics option for players to opt into on games released today. And I do accept that the jump to DX12 and Vulkan is more complex, I'm making the broader point about when DirectX versions are released compared to their sort of default use. Just because a technology is available doesn't mean it's the right choice for people developing a game. For new players, the first experience still doesn't seem that great. It's honestly much better now than in the game's heyday. 
I'm still not sure of the best way to try and get across to people that much of their sort of preconceived notions learned from other FPS games kind of don't apply in Plant Side 2. Stuff like don't worry about getting killed, KDA means nothing, you can't carry a team by doing something spectacular, it's about scale and coordination, and the idea that this game is so much about logistics, the side who can get their people to where they need to be in the best way will win. It's a lot to take in, and tutorials and other scripted hand-holding setups seem to take a huge amount of developer work to get in and get right, and honestly I'm saying that still the best way to learn is have someone who already plays help you. I'd say that at this point the greatest disappointment with Planet Side 2 is the lack of recognition that it gets, that other developers didn't see the core of what makes Planet Side 2 endlessly replayable and rewarding and want to build on that, but with this recent update PS2 is coming of age, it can finally hit its stride and deliver the kind of experience we all knew was in there from the beginning. I played a bit more over the past few days and found great fights, massive combined armed battles mixed with salty yell chat, open platoons of helpful people and remembered outfit names that had slipped my memory suddenly filled the kill feed again, it gave me a warm glow in my chest that wasn't just from lasher spam. It makes me want to play more, and in fact I have a friend who wants to check it out soon, so perhaps I'll have some more thoughts on introducing people to the unique sides of Planet Side 2 in the near future. I think playing with someone new is about as close as you can get to that initial rush of discovery, a bit like watching a film you've seen a hundred times with someone new to it, it gives you sort of fresh eyes and a different perspective. I do hope that Planet Side 2 goes from strength to strength. This update gives it renewed vigour, with the attention it's been receiving, I hope it all helps bolster its position as a jewel in the crown of gaming, and one well worth your time, yes even in 2019. I'm very interested to know whether this new patch is the jolt you'll need to get your boots back on our axis, or perhaps you've been waiting for this update with beta breath, or maybe you've never even tried Planet Side 2 and you're wondering what all the fuss is about. Leave a comment below right now with your thoughts and feelings, I'll be reading every single one of them. If you enjoyed the video please leave some feedback, a thumb in the direction of your general enjoyment, and perhaps even tap that sub button if you'd like more gaming videos from a bloke with a weird sounding voice. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, take care.